Brainoids! Hello everybody, welcome to Brainload, the only brain downloadable tutorials on the net. Today's tutorial is on Chronolapse. So today I'll be showing you how to use this program and how you can make time lapses with it. Uh, before we do that though, let me explain to you what this program does. So Chronolapse is a free utility cool little guy that allows you to take screenshots every few seconds to be compiled into a video later whether it be a time lapse or a stop motion. Uh, the program itself can be used to compile these images but I suggest you use a dedicated video editor for that. Uh, but now that you know what this program does uh, let's download it for free. So this is the official Chronolapse download page. Uh, the link to this page is in the description. But here you'll find the different versions of Chronolapse. For Windows, you want to look at this link. It's 107. Uh, it's featured and it has the most amount of downloads. So let's go here. And this is the actual download page for the uh, version you selected. I uh, want to click this link and it will prompt you to open or save the file. Uh, we want to save the file and uh, save it wherever you want. We'll be opening it up with a archi archiver later on. Now that we got this file downloaded, we're going to open it. And in here, we're going to find a folder named Chronolapse EXE Win 107. This is the actual program folder that has all of your Chronolapse files. Uh, this folder is portable, so you can put it on a flash drive. Uh, but for this demonstration, we're going to extract it to a permanent location. You can put it in your program's files folder uh, to group it with your other programs. Uh, but for me, I already have it extracted right here. My program files folder has all the files here. The file we're going to be focusing on is the Chronolapse exe file right here. Uh, you can make a shortcut to your desktop uh, by right-clicking uh, and create shortcut and we're going to drag this shortcut to the desktop and uh, this is the shortcut we're going to use to access the program now the program separates its different features in different tabs here we're going to be focusing on the capture tab right here for now uh, this is the main window you're going to be uh, capturing screenshots in um, the two most common options uh, that you're going to be focusing on is the time between captures box here and the start capture button. Um, the time between captures uh, box is actually the intervals in seconds between each screenshot. So it'll take a screenshot once you press this button um, and then 30 seconds later I'll take a screenshot and it'll do that automatically 30 seconds 30 seconds 30 seconds and to actually start the capture you click this button uh, for the other options uh, let me get into detail with that the time between captures is the amount of time that the program will wait in between each screenshot it'll take so in this case 30 means 30 seconds this is measured in seconds um, the program will take a screenshot then it will wait 30 seconds and then it will take a screenshot then wait 30 seconds and it will take a screenshot and so on uh, this is an automatic process that you start by clicking the start capture button but before we start capturing anything we need to tell the program where we want it to put all of the pictures that it takes we do this by clicking on the first configure button here right next to screenshots and it'll place all of the captures right here in this folder. I have it set to my Chronolapse folder and my Documents folder. Once you have that set, we're going to click OK and you can go ahead and start capturing. Now that we let the program run for a while, we're going to go to our folder that we set and we're going to take a visit to our captures here. We're going to make these into a video, a time lapse video. So we're going to do that by going to our video tab here. This tab may look complicated, but we're only going to pay attention to three boxes and a button. The first box is the source images. This is the folder that we have all of our captures in. So we're going to click this button and we're going to browse to wherever we have our captures in. 
The second folder is the destination folder. This is where the video file is going to be placed. So put that wherever you want. I'm going to put it in, in my videos folder here. The third box is the frame rate. Typically I set it to 15. Uh, you don't really have to worry about it. Uh, it's more for the advanced stuff. But after you set that, we're going to create a video here. Now that it's done encoding, you can go to the folder where you saved the video in and watch it. Now that you get the basic gist of the program, I'm going to show you all of the different other features that this program has to offer. I'm going to do this by giving you a basic idea of the different features, then later explain in more detail the more important ones. In the capture tab, we have a few other options. We have the webcam option which basically makes your webcam a time-lapse device pretty much works the same as screenshots for every uh, few seconds it captures a frame from your webcam we have the force capture option which basically allows you to make stop-motion videos with this program uh, we have the register hotkey option which uh, is used to capture a single frame from your uh, whatever your screenshots or webcam basically a hotkey to press this button right here in the schedule tab it allows you to set a start time for the capture and an end time for the capture the adjust tab basically allows you to resize the capture images you have in the folder you specify the annotate tab is used to add text annotations to your already captured images so you can select the font you can uh, fade it in the video you can fade it out all these options for annotating in your videos the PIP tab is really only used if you also captured your webcam along with your screenshots um, and it basically merges them together to make one image to uh, put in a video the audio tab as its name implies is where you add any sort of audio to your video whether it be music whether it be some sound or whatever now let's get into more of the advanced stuff the time between captures is used to control how long your video is going to play um, this is pretty much brother and sister with the frame rate uh, these go really well together you have to adjust both of these to get um, the length you want and how fast your video is going to play to get a better idea of what I mean let's look at the clock here now the higher the number that you put in this box the faster that this clock will tick in the finished video the lower the number the slower that this clock will tick this is why the time between captures and the actual frame rate of the video play together. So let's say that we have a 60 second interval in between each captures. So basically this is going to make the program take a screenshot every minute, once a minute. Now the frame rate, if we have it on 15, that means for every second of the finished video, this clock will tick about 15 minutes. Now let's take a look at the screenshots, how you can actually adjust them for you. Uh, we did pop up this box before to change the location of where our screenshots are going to be saved but we also have a little more options here if you have two monitors you can actually capture them uh, both in one image by selecting this if you only want it the primary monitor you want to unselect that uh, the timestamp show timestamp that basically adds a timestamp it adds a time code um, explaining it's pretty much this a copy of the clock here in the bottom right of the video I think that's where it's located the file prefix is basically if we take a look at our screenshots uh, it's a prefix right here so as we can see in each of these files start with screen underscore and the date and time that's what this is so you can change the prefix if you want 
As for the file format, it's basically your preference between file size and quality. If you want a more quality video, you want to do PNG. If you want a small file size, do JPG. I recommend doing JPG because there's not really much of a quality difference between these two and you'll get a smaller file size, so I suggest JPG. Alright, so that pretty much sums up all of the important features of Chronolaps, uh, the most commonly used ones at least. Uh, if you don't really know what a button does, I'm not sure, uh, just hover over it. This program is really good at adding tooltips everywhere. It pretty much has it on uh, most of the buttons here. Uh, so this program isn't that complicated. It's a really cool program. Uh, I suggest you get it. Uh, play around, make a time lapse of your own. Pretty cool. I have a few time lapses on my uh, my channel here. Really fun to do. Really easy. Thank you all for watching. I hope this brain load helped you in any way. And as always, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to check them out and answer them to the best of my ability. Now I did mention making a time lapse with a separate video editor. Uh, click here and that'll redirect you to a tutorial on how to do that. If you want to see a time lapse that I made using Chronolapse, just click here. But that's all for me guys. I'll see you in the next brain load tutorial.